Hello everyone, welcome on my channel. Today I would love to show you my collection of tarot and oracle cards, which are the cards used for divination. Uh, I've been making this collection for past three years or so, and I'm very excited to show you today, as I was planning to do this video for a very long time now. In any case, if you would have those cards and you would like to also share your opinion on them and agree or disagree with me, that would be super lovely and I would love to hear your opinion about those decks as well. Now without further ado, I would love to start with all my tarot cards and then I would move on to oracle cards and all the timestamps towards the decks will be in the description or in the comments down below. Uh, let's get started. First of all, I would like to start with obviously classic Rider Waits deck. This is the fourth deck I got. Uh, I got it on Christmas as a gift and uh, this is my most universal deck I use. And I bought the one with uh, keywords. So all the keywords for reversals and classical meanings are on the cards itself so it was very helpful for me to learn them. Starting from the deck itself, as I said, it's very universal. You can use it for everything. Uh, I look forward to buying a better deck of the, the same uh, author, but without the keywords and maybe in a better version. This deck was super cheap. It was probably the cheapest deck you can find on the market so far. Uh, it costs about 10 euro or so. The images are obviously very universal, they're very classical, simple. Uh, you can use this deck for everything, I would always recommend it for beginners with tarot. Uh, when it comes to quality, of course, you cannot expect anything great for 10 euro, but I think like either way, uh, I find this deck to be great for working with it. Um, it's great for shuffling, regardless of the fact that the deck got kind of um, airy, in a sense that it, uh, its consistency got higher because of the paper damage but basically it should be like that but now it's kind of up <laughs> anyways but that's it about it uh, i really like this deck uh, additionally i edged the edges with a marker for them to match the color originally they were white i think that's the simplest deck i have um, i love it i will always use it and it's great the next deck i would like to talk about is primordial talrod it's one of my favorite decks so far. Uh, I got it about two years ago. It's lovely. The packaging is very boxy. It's very nice. It's You can definitely store your cards in it. Uh, it's not pipe papery like um, they usually are. Uh, so it's very good and I find it a plus. Coming back to the deck itself, I absolutely love it. I love the design on the back. I think it's so lovely. Starting off from the guidebook, I feel like it was great. The descriptions were super nice. Uh, I've had so much fun reading this guidebook and learning from it. I think my favorite description was the description of a full card, uh, talking about the enthusiasm and gratefulness for being there, living, you know, not just surviving but being grateful on being in the present moment where you are. But either way, I think the guidebook was really awesome. Uh, it also had a one spread, which I think works nice. But generally, I think like descriptions were very beautiful. And I would really recommend that guidebook. Moving on to cards themselves, I feel like illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. As you can see. I totally fell in love with that deck the moment I got it. It's it's beautiful. The meanings of the cards are very clear, very straightforward, very nicely described. But it's just... The colors are amazing. The saturation is amazing. I love how vibrant it is. I love how each uh, suit has like their own colors in the deck but it's absolutely awesome i love using this deck for spiritual spreads it has their own 
uh, meaning I wouldn't say they are based on Rider Waite Tarot, uh, so I wouldn't recommend it for a, for a beginner, but I feel like it's a great, great deck for someone who is a little bit more advanced and wants to have something uh, new in their collection. This deck is one of the best purchases I made. I felt very connected to it the moment I got it. I feel like it's also a pretty good deck for general readings, but personally I just love using them for spiritual meaning, spiritual life guidance. I feel like that's what it's great for. It has a very, very specific, nice vibe to it. I feel like the whole deck is just having this magical feel to it. Uh, it, it's giving me a very, very specific, nice feeling. I cannot describe it, but I think like this deck is absolutely gorgeous. It has absolutely gorgeous meanings, and it, it really feels like it's been really worked on, and the whole thing is just amazing to me. Um, it's one of my favorites. Moving on to quality of the cards, I feel like it's one of the best quality cards I have. They are very, very nice. They are papery. Um shining. Generally this is just a good quality card. Uh, above the fact that they can uh, they can get a little scratched if you shuffle them roughly but not as much as the other decks I have. So it's very good deck if you're looking for something like that. This is absolutely purchase I recommend. Moving on to the next deck of my favorites is this deck of Murder of Rose Tarot. I absolutely love it as well. It's it's basically the same box uh, quality as this one. It, they feel very similar. They are almost the same decks, just obviously different theme, but uh, quality-wise and making-wise it's absolutely almost the same. Uh, the box is super nice also. You can definitely store your cards with it and it looks great. Moving on to cards themselves. As well as the previous deck, they are very nice, very good quality. The only thing I would um, say is that they can get really, really scratched and it shows later. I don't know if you could see it, but they basically get uh, scratched a lot. Especially here, if you can see, those all are scratches. So those cards are very easy, easy scratched or uh, damaged in that way, especially that they are black and white, it's, it's gonna show a little bit. Uh, let me show you maybe a good example of that. Here you can see the scratches. So yeah, that's the only thing I would worry about in this deck is that it gets scratched. So especially if you're like a rough shuffler, it, it might get um, damaged a little bit easier. As you can see, this is all scratched a little bit. So yeah, it, it all kind of scratched and you could probably see it even more in the real life. I, I scratched it quite a bit because I'm a shuffler. Uh, just as a previous deck, it shuffles very nicely, by the way, if I didn't mention before, but yeah, it, it's quite a nice deck to shuffle. Uh, it's good quality, very nice size. Um, it's quite bigger than a uh, Rider weights I have, but yeah, it's, it's basically a perfect size and very good quality. Coming on to messages and reading from it, I feel like it's it's really great. Um, I feel like it's very deep of meaning, it also has its own vibe on its own. It, it feels very nice and special. And the fact that uh, it's black and white gives it like another uh, dimension, another depth. Uh, but I feel like it's absolutely beautiful. It's it's also one of the best decks uh, I purchased. It's gorgeous. Uh, I don't have any other word for it. Uh, I absolutely love it. This deck, as written in the guidebook, it is meant for more of a deeper messages, more of a truth, honest, authentic truth you need to know type of message. And it, it, so it is designed to be kind of more rough with you, more direct. But yeah, I absolutely love this deck. I would say it's more closer to Rider Waits than the previous Primordial Tarot because it has more of a similar imaginary or images. But generally it's just glorious beautiful deck um 
I absolutely also recommend it for anyone who is into more of a darker, uh, authentic vibe. Going on to the guidebook, I feel like it was quite good. Uh, I didn't have necessarily anything to catch on to that would be negative in this guidebook as well as with a previous deck. I feel like it was very nice. It was uh, definitely had its own vibe. Uh, I wouldn't say it was anything uh, particularly uh, special or particularly uh, deep. I feel like the messages were quite simple. I would say it's it's probably more uh, easier than the previous deck. And the guidebook is obviously in a couple of languages just as previews. It, it has also its own spread. But generally, I think that this deck is also a great purchase and it's one of the best I own. It's one of my favorite. Uh, I love reading with it. I feel like it's very nice, very honest. It's quite easy to learn if you sit and uh, read the guidebook. And I feel like generally it's an awesome deck. Now, moving on to the next deck, Deviant Moon Tarot. This deck is completely awesome. It uh, comes in a paper box like that. And that's how the card looks. The only thing I really regret is not taking the borderless version because it has a lot of white edges also on the back. So that's something that really struck me, that it has edges on the back and I didn't like it. Uh, I wanted to cut the edges, but I guess maybe in the future I will buy the borderless version. But generally, it's a great deck. I really connected to it. Um, maybe not in a way of imaginary. It's not my definitely style in a sense of, um, you know, that it gets to me and, oh, I want this one. But but it gets to you, you know what I mean? Like, the imaginary is so great. It just hits you. It's very psychological deck. Uh, I love using it for psychology, for clarity about the situation, the unraveling it and uh, underlying issues or reasoning behind the actions or feelings or anything like that. So this is a great additional deck for clarification. You can definitely use it for just a main reading, but I absolutely love, I love using it for uh, clarity and as an additional card, underlying card for a, for a meaning or psychology or whatever it is. It is great at explaining what's going on under the surface. And as I said, very psychological, very good deck. It has um, great imaginary. It's very well worked on. You can see that in every picture. It's the same thing, like with the same style and it's very like detailed and um, it's just a very great piece of work I, I have to say like it is a great deck I feel like for anyone it is a great deck it's um, imaginary is very similar to Rider Waits but I feel like it's it's different as a, every tarot every deck has a different vibe to it everything is different it can be based on Rider Waits but it still will be different because of imaginary because of the vibe of the deck and but I have to say I absolutely love this deck. I love working with it. It is one of my favorite decks. Moving on to the book itself. It comes just with a paper book. And it's quite thin. Because it only has English. And as much as it looks very uh, short. And as much as you can see like the descriptions are very short. I have to admit this is a very good guidebook. I feel like even though it's very short, it, gre the, the, it greatly uh, explains uh, what the card is about and <laughs> additionally it has upright and reversed meanings and I feel like it's so helpful and this deck is absolutely great for reverse meanings as well. Um, I couldn't imagine reading it without reverse meanings um, and I feel like the guidebook itself really greatly explains it. Um, I remember I got through all of the guidebook and I had a very nice understanding of the deck. It just has the meanings itself as a keyword. But honestly, it wasn't much of a problem with me to learn it. It has usually a couple of sentences about the card and then upright and the reverse meanings. Honestly, I feel like it's a great guidebook. It didn't it doesn't feel poor, it doesn't feel like it's not enough worked on. I feel like it's perfect as it is, honestly. And I feel like I never had a problem to for learning this deck or understanding how it works. Even the court cards were 
really nicely described even though I'm usually not good at learning court cards which is like queen, pages, knights uh, but I feel like in this book it was quite nicely explained and uh, I kind of got the meaning of them quite fast generally um, honestly it's a great deck to read with uh, I would recommend it definitely for anyone. Coming on to quality, I feel like it's quite okay. Uh, it's quite good. I've been using it for a while and it didn't get much of a scratcher, so that's a plus. Uh, I've been definitely using it a lot. As you can see, it's not much destroyed. It's in very good quality. Um, the cards bend a little bit, that's what I would say, but they're very like bendy, you know, kind of. So if you're someone who is shuffling in the method of you know this then it might get a little banded as you can see mine got a little banded but i don't honestly think that's um anything wrong with it but as i said i would recommend taking the borderless version i just think it's much more suiting for this deck but the quality i don't have anything much to say about it other than it's just good <laughs> you know so i don't have anything bad to say generally about this deck other than the design i don't like edge decks and something that um, really annoyed me at the beginning is the fact that they've put um, the logo of the card but basically here's a logo of US games and I feel like I didn't like it a lot the fact that they've decided to put it on the illustrations rather than on the back for example or generally not at all <laughs> but I have different decks that has those signs for example in the back uh, but yeah, that's what I didn't like about this deck is that the logo is on the illustrations. Uh, but that's basically all I can say. I don't have anything wrong to say about this deck generally. The artwork is great. It's very good quality when it comes to the reading. Uh, it's almost amazing how nicely it reads with it. Uh, I really, really, really enjoyed working with this deck. It's it's made for reversals, so if someone you're someone who wants to learn reversals, who wants to have a deck particularly for reversed meanings, this deck is great. It's also one of my favorites, not in the sense of illustration or um, you know the vibe, because both are my favorites. The Primordial and uh, Murder of Crows. Those are my favorite when it comes to illustrations and the vibe and the something that personalizes with me. But this deck is generally just good, okay? Anyone can work with it. it it's it's great deck generally. Coming on to next tarot deck, which is the Edmund Dulac Tarot. It comes in the paper box, uh, not really sturdy, not really good. It's just a paper box. Coming on to quality of cards, they are very plasticky. Uh, they are almost like made from the plastic. So yeah, this is the back of the cards. I feel like it's very lovely. Uh, generally, I was very um, drawn to this deck because it has beautiful illustrations. Truly gorgeous. So I was really drawn to it by the illustrations. Sadly, when I got the deck, I didn't really feel it. I didn't get as much connected to it as I would like to get connected to it. Um, possibly also I got really disconnected from it because I have started to make my own reading, my own meanings for reversals of it because this deck is not meant for reversals. It came with a book, guidebook that only covered the upright meanings and so I feel like I really messed up my understanding of the deck uh, trying to do reversals on them mm, but generally I have to say I didn't connect much to the, to the deck as much as it had beautiful illustrations um, I feel like the moment I got the deck I got kind of uh, disappointed working in it because I didn't just connect to it as much I feel like illustrations don't really fit the meaning of the card sometimes I feel like it's just obviously illustration taken from an artist and put into the deck and trying to make it work. But generally I just don't feel like this deck was uh, worked enough on. I don't feel like it's the greatest deck I own at all. And as much as it has beautiful illustrations, I feel like not all of them are as nice as I, I would like to. Some of them are more clear, some of them are more blurry and I feel like it really destroys the vibe of the deck itself generally. 
um, as you can see for example here is a beautiful detailed card of a lovers it is absolutely gorgeous it is very detailed colorful and nice and um, it gives you a nice vibe right but for example this is the card of judgment and it's very blurry it has no details you can barely see what's going on in it and that is i think the thing i didn't like the most about this deck is the fact that half of the images are good half of the images are kind of blurry or not really looking finished up which i feel really sad about uh, considering how beautiful the deck could be if it would have all the beautiful illustrations uh, in a very nice detailistic form. Uh, but sadly it's not the only thing I was kind of disappointed in this deck. Coming on to the guidebook, I feel like that was the another disappointment uh, with that deck is that I did not like the guidebook. I did not like how uh, the cards were described. I feel like it was very poorly described. The meanings were kind of mixed up. Uh, they didn't kind of uh, match generally and they didn't have enough depth in it. In comparison to a Deviant Moon Tarot, the cards had a short description but they were very full in depth and you could really look within a card through them and it was very clear what the card is about. Meanwhile in this deck I feel like the meanings were very uh, shallow, uh, they were hard to understand, hard to really dive into them and I feel like that's the thing I care about m mostly in the card's description is to see the depth of the card so I can really learn it and feel the emotion behind it, feel the energy behind it, the vibe of the card. And I feel like this is something that didn't give it to me. Um, I did not feel the cards, I did not feel the meaning of them. And as much as the illustrations are pretty and nice, I feel like sadly they did not give, gave me the depth of them. They didn't give me the feeling that I needed to feel from them in order to make nice deep readings with them. Also I feel like a lot of meanings of the card were uh, kind of repeating themselves so there's a lot of cards in the deck that uh, apparently due to the guidebook have a very similar meaning to them. Um, so that's something I really didn't like about this deck is that a lot of meanings are basically mixed up and kind of similar and kind of um, out of the place, I would say. And as I said, generally shallow explanations of a card, there's lack of meaning, lack of depth. For example, the Lover's card. The description all it says is, uh, among the trees and flowers, true love becomes passion, romance and sexuality. Attraction unites the bodies and the spirit sees nothing but the beloved. And the keywords are love, life, uh, sex, decisions in one's love life. But I feel like it's so shallow considering how much more depth this card have in a Rider Waite Tarot, where it means decisions, it means uh, commitment, it means uh, opposites, uh, plural stuff, um, men and women, uh, love also. Um, it means so many more things than just this. I feel like the exp explanation of lovers is very shallow in this deck, for example. So I feel like just as in, with imagi imaginary, the, just some cards are better than the others and there's not really like balance or harmony between that. Uh, like for example, Diamond Mutarot, everything is really good quality. Each card is made of detail and every illustration is perfect on its own. While in this deck, like everything is mixed up. I just don't feel like this deck was really worked on enough. I don't feel like there was enough effort put into making it a tarot deck. All of this for me sometimes is just um, a deck of cards with nice images on it. Some of them, some of them not. Um, the guidebook was really disappointing and generally I didn't connect to the deck as much as I would love to. I feel like I got kind of uh, guided through the nice illustrations on the website but the moment I got the deck it wasn't that much of a deal. 
Uh, I feel like this deck would have much more potential if it would be more deeply described and if there would be more energy to read from it. For now, I feel like it's just a very shallow, in a sense, deck. Um, regardless, due to the reading, I still think like it's a nice deck to read from. If you're someone who doesn't like to look too much into the meanings, who wants just a very simple meaning and without any depth to it, I feel like it would be nice for practical readings or anything fast, really. Um, I still read it with a deck, I still think like it's very nice to read from. Um, it still have a nice meanings regardless of what I said. Uh, I feel like it's still a very readable deck, I feel like it's still nice. All I just was is a little bit disappointed with a couple of things about it and just the fact that I didn't connect to it as much. And once again, this is not the way illustrations made for tarot, this is just illustration taken from artists and tried to be put into the meanings of tarot. And I really think like if someone would put more effort into the meanings of them, maybe it would have uh, much better potential for readings. But generally, I feel like it's still a very nice deck. I feel like illustrations are still absolutely gorgeous in that deck. Um, I heard some people say that uh, they were really just disappointed by the colors. Uh, because on the website they seemed more saturated, more light. And in reality, they are kind of moody. And I have to agree with that. The deck kind of moves very cooled down and uh, shaded down. Um... It doesn't have as much color to it and it's not as light as maybe the illustrations might be looking. But yeah, it, it is quite moody. It is quite uh, darkish in a sense of colors. Um, but the quality is very nice. Uh, generally the cards don't get destroyed almost at all, just as a previous deck. Plus it's really plasticky, uh, it's not really papery. So it's also very nice and protective, so you don't have to worry much about wetting it in, as much as you would with the normal paper cards. Um, so that's what I would say, like it's very durable and nice deck. Um, it didn't get as much banded, it still got banded, but I feel like it's very good still. I feel like the quality of the deck itself is really, really good. As much as I don't know if plastic feeling deck are good, decks are good or not, still it's very nice deck. And generally it's still nice for reading, I still enjoy reading with it. But I feel like there are better decks that I connect more to. The last tarot deck I have here is of course the Hot Tarot. And generally I don't have much to say about it because I didn't use it as much as I would like to because it is a complicated deck, I have to agree, it is a complicated deck, you have to really study on it and honestly I'm just now getting into the study of it even though I ordered it maybe over a year ago, year and a half ago. I think like the illustrations on it are gorgeous, I feel like they're beautiful, they are, it's, it's again a very good worked on deck with a bunch of very deep meanings that a person has to really dive into. And of course not everyone has the time for it, but if you do, if you want to study a deck, this is a good deck for that with a lot of depth. And again, the guidebook I got with it, obviously it's okay, but uh, it doesn't really explain as much as you would like to know about the deck. It has more of a complicated, complex meanings and it's honestly not enough for this deck. You probably, if you get this deck, you have to really look online on the meanings or on books or people explaining about it, that's why I still didn't get into it as much as I would like to and it will probably still take me some time and study to really read with that deck because as I said, it is complicated, it is complex, it has complex meanings, it has a very... it has a lot of uh, symbolism in it and you really have to sit down and understand it and uh, dive deep into it to understand what the deck is about. Uh, so that's why I don't have much to say about it. Quality, um, I think it's okay. Box is very nice quality as you can see. Um, it's not the best, it's just a paper one, but I think it's better than... Uh, but generally, it's a very nice deck, I have to say, uh, even though I didn't read much with it yet. Now let's move on to gorgeous oracle decks I have. First of all, let's start with a vintage uh, wisdom oracle deck. 
uh, this is my most used deck so far I love it I think like it's gorgeous it's very simple it's good for beginner it's it's great for beginner um, why because it has very nice keywords on them so it's very nice to read with it um, so you're definitely gonna like it as a beginner plus if you would like to dive more deeply into it it has very nice guidebook with a very big descriptions um, that hide very nice and philosophical almost meanings behind them so I feel like it would be a great for you if you are a beginner uh, the box is very nice very sturdy uh, again you can definitely keep it in it it's very beautiful you can see the shining uh, paper on it. It's, it's very nice quality box. Either way, moving forward. As I said, it has a nice guidebook with a lot of meanings. Usually, like you, as you can see, the meanings are quite long, but have in mind that also the beginning of it is usually describing also the look of the card and what is going on in it, but definitely it is a great... Uh, I, I feel like it's a very nice description, but help you dive deeper into the meaning of it is more of a spiritual meanings more of a guidance readings as it is in a oracle cards but generally i was definitely not disappointed with this guidebook i feel like it was very nice and i really enjoyed it and i still enjoy it the meanings are very very nice and gentle and they can really guide you nicely if you would like to dive deep besides the keywords on the cards. Moving on to the cards themselves, they are quite big. They are way bigger than a um, normal tarot deck, as you can see. Here you have a comparison. As you can see, it's way bigger. Uh, so that's what's my also problem with this deck, is that if you have small hands, it will be hard for you to shuffle them. I still do them, but I have to really scratch, stretch my hand, and it can hurt, but... Um, other than that, I feel like it's a very beautiful deck. Have in mind, I have a small hands, so if you have bigger hands, that probably won't be a much of a problem for you to shuffle those, but they are big. Uh, the, moving on to quality, I think like it's very nice quality. I didn't have any problem with it, rather than the fact that I destroyed them a little trying to shuffle them because the edges are more uh, delicate than the cards itself. So if you're someone who shuffles, the edges might get a little bit of a... Um, damage to them but it's really not as much as you can see the edges got a little destroyed due to the shuffling but definitely it does not stop you from reading it's definitely a quite good quality after all they are very very good quality actually they are very uh thick going on to reading those cards i feel like they are very nice for both more of a shallow uh, explanation of what's going on and more of an in-depth with a guidebook uh, but it generally you will have a lot of fun especially as a beginner it has very nice keywords and that's why I took it in the first place due to its keywords which are very simple very straightforward we have uh, for example grace uh, we have guardian angel um, beauty which this card for example uh, means beauty right uh, this is the keyword and you can read it as that and try to drown and channel the energy and information from it. But for example, in the guidebook, if you read the meaning of it, it means basically trusting in the divine plan and basically the fact that everything at the end is uh, perfectly matched to your situation and to the plan of God, in quotes. So basically that means that everything that's going on is coming to a greater finish plan. Uh, that has a purpose in the end and to see the bigger picture rather than just details and getting upset about them basically of course it's just my uh, what I remember from it and but yeah that's how for example how you can read it you can read it in guidebook or how you feel about it we have celebration we have uh, ancestors we have uh, compassion awakening listening patience Reflection, Surrender, Sanctuary, Harmony, Release, Pot, Truth, Power, Adventure, Choice, Protection. So this is the type of a meaning 
meanings and keywords this deck has. I feel like it's a very gorgeous deck to work with, plus it's vintage, it has very nice illustrations on them. Uh, it's probably like edited uh, vintage photos or something like that. I don't remember because I didn't read the description uh, of this deck as often, but it's basically a very nice deck and I would recommend it for beginner or anything, anyone who would like to read a very nice oracle deck. Plus it's really beautiful. It has about 52 cards, so it's also quite a big oracle deck. It has a lot of cards. Uh, probably more of an average oracle deck so yeah i feel like this one is gorgeous this one is perfect and very general very good for anyone really so this is something i would really recommend now the next deck of oracle is this deck of amor et psych oracle if i did it correctly but it's basically more of a love oracle uh, i got it um, maybe a few months ago it has a very nice box with very nice texture on it um so you definitely can again keep your cards in this box it's very nice very beautiful very nice illustration moving on to cards themselves there's 30 cards on this oracle deck so it's not much it's usually a love deck because it's supposed to be for advice as for love. It's a little bit nude, uh, but ha it has really beautiful illustrations. Gorgeous. It's a very simple oracle deck when it comes to, you know. So yeah, it has very nice illustrations and that's what I've been drawn to. I really like this vibe of like... Uh, Greek uh, kind of style and uh, Rome style uh, of it um, but generally I was a little bit of a disappointed uh, because again that they didn't really match my expectations I was hoping it would be more of a general nice type of deck and as much as the um, as much as the illustrations and kind of keywords are kind of nice um, I feel like I was again very disappointed by the guidebook, but I feel like it might be only my uh, impression of it and maybe some of you might be feeling different about it. It basically has 30 cards divided by 10, 10, 10 and all of them are kind of like a different stage of love and the meaning behind it and in each description of a card you have seeing love, making love, being love and proclaiming love which is usually the love story, action, meditation, and affirmation, and what it would be for each card. Um, personally, I did not really connect to those meanings. I was expecting something maybe more deep, something maybe with more meaning towards it. So as much as the deck has really beautiful illustrations, and it is quite of a nice quality, I would say, it's just papery, but I cannot say really about much of a quality because I didn't use it as much as I, I would like to. Um, I just felt a little bit of a disappointed with the guidebook and the meanings. I don't think like it's really connected to me and it didn't really give me the general idea of a card and its meaning and the fact that it's divided on so many stuff and uh, so many um, guides and like the fact that it's divided to an action or an affirmation or meditation towards it. I feel like it got really messy to me and as much as I think like this deck was worked on, I don't really feel like it's something that gave me a proper meaning towards it. It's definitely an oracle gui guidebook that would guide you towards certain actions or affirmations. But other than that, I generally prefer decks with a very um, energetical vibe to it, where you can clearly see and feel what the card is about. And I feel like I had a little bit of a problem with it, especially that it's very, um, that this deck is very guided towards love um, guidance, but not in the most general best way. It's very like specific in a sense that it doesn't give me space for my own interpretation of a card, which keeps you kind of stuck. Uh, regardless, it might just be only my impression of a deck, so I don't say everyone would feel that way about it. I still feel like it's a very gorgeous deck, I just didn't have much of a chance to work with it and it just wasn't as connecting as I wished it would. Maybe I will be working with it more and maybe then I will have a more better idea of how it is to read with it, but 
for now I'm gonna leave it at that. I also bought this deck due to wanting to use it for like relationship advice and stuff like that, but again, I don't think like it was really helpful for that. I feel like it has a clear theme of love and everything, but it just wasn't it for me, I guess. Regardless, it's still a nice deck and I'm still excited to work with it whenever I have a chance to. And maybe on my next video of reviewing cards, I will have maybe a better idea of it and maybe a better experience out of it. Now moving on to the next deck, this is the deck uh, Angularium, Oracle of the Mansions. This is probably the second uh, oracle I got in my life. And I honestly have very nice experience out of it. And they are very connected to the meanings of uh, Kabbalah and stuff like that. And also Tree of Life. Generally, I had a very nice experience with this deck, as I said. Uh, the box is nice, also to mention. It, also, you can keep it in it. Uh, it has very nice, as you can see, um, reflecting thing on it, the writing. Uh, but yeah, generally good packaging. You can definitely keep it on the display with it. Uh, but uh, moving on to the deck itself, as you can see, this is the back of it. Uh, one thing that I really, um, not really, but like uh, that was bothering me, that uh, is that it came kind of already um, folded like that. Uh, so the moment I took it out of the box, this is the original state this deck came in, which is it was a little uh, bended. I don't know, maybe it's a production thing, uh, but definitely it was something that kind of weirded me out at the beginning, which is the deck coming in a little bit folded. Um, but generally, I have a very good experience of this deck. Um, starting out from the guide guidebook, um, it is with a couple of uh, languages. I feel like the thing that I really like the most about the guidebook is the very nice poetic meanings and descriptions of the cards. I feel like it really helped me get a very nice feel of the cards. Uh, sometimes I got gas bombs, sometimes I just... It was very poetically nicely written to the point where I could really feel into the card itself and I feel like the descriptions themselves were very nice uh, even without the cards. They were still nice to read through, especially if you really feel into them. And the deck is generally divided into the tree of life and the angels, uh, that's how it's written. But either way, here's the deck. Uh, it's beautiful. It has very beautiful illustrations. They are very digital oriented, so it's most like a digital art uh, vibe here. As you can see, this is beautiful, very saturated, nice illustration. I feel like neither did I really connect to the deck and neither did I disconnect from the deck. It's just a nice deck generally. Moving on to the reading with it, I feel like it's very nice, but I wouldn't recommend it for the beginners. It's definitely a deck uh, that you would have to really dive into and uh, it has very deep meanings. It is more of a general energy type of feel what I'm getting. That's how I read with this deck. I feel like it gives me a very general energy, uh, like a general principle of an energy and from that I can very intuitively dive into the reading. That's why I feel like it's for like most of a more advanced of a reader, someone who is already used to channeling the energy because this deck is really about intuition. It's about uh, really knowing how to dive into the energy of a reading. But yeah, I feel like it was very nice described. I feel like it's a very nice deck, very nice illustrations. I don't have anything bad to say about it generally. I feel like it's a great for someone who is just a little bit more advanced and who has maybe more understanding of uh, things that are talked here about, like Tree of Life and uh, Kabbalah and stuff like that. I generally don't, but I still, I still, it's nice for me to still read from that deck, regardless if I have a knowledge about it or not. Uh, but yeah, it's a very nice deck with general uh, meanings. And I usually use it for energy re-evaluation and some very like general pathway towards the reading. Now moving on to the last deck is this uh, Angel Advice deck. It's I got it in my original language, which is Polish. It's by uh, Doreen Virtue. Um, and yeah, it is probably for it is probably it is a uh, first oracle I 
got and um it is very simple it is the simplest you can get it's basically just like a words of advice very simple like uh make an action uh, ask your angels uh look for a sign uh not likely uh clear communication uh, situation will improve helpful people no no yes yes you know those type of stuff and um the deck definitely has its own vibe it definitely has a nice vibe a very specific one um it is a uh, gold edge but due to the fact that i started um i started shuffling when i got it i really <laughs> destroyed the edging because i didn't know how to shuffle back then but yeah, I feel like illustrations are okay, I didn't necessarily like or dislike them, I feel like mm, similarly to the Edmund Dulac deck, it's like one of them are better, one of them are worse, and they are generally like different, uh, different uh, styles of uh, imaginary from time to time, it's like two different artists almost are doing it, like as you can see. This one looks more of a digital like digital art, and this one is more like uh, like it's almost different different art. You can see that only colors are similar. Uh, but regardless, um, I feel like I enjoyed this deck for some time. I didn't use it right now for a couple of months at least, so I'm not as connected to this deck anymore. I feel like it's very general and it's maybe not my vibe anymore with the colors and. Uh, you know, messages and ask your angels and everything. I think I'm not in this type of vibes for reading. I still feel like it's a nice deck for general advice, a very general word of advice for someone, but I just don't generally use it for a moment. Um, I feel like quality wise it was okay, not the best. It was definitely on the lower quality of the decks. Uh, I remember I definitely wetted one of the cards in the water and um it, it was not the best experience but as you can see i feel like something happened to this car maybe i folded it a little bit and it got like this crack in the middle um and i definitely wetted as i said one of my cards as you can see this is the, the wetted card fortunately nothing um, as bad happened to it it just got a little bit of wet um but yeah generally it's a very okay deck it's very general deck great for a beginner um but uh, yeah i definitely don't use it as much um due to the fact that i just have better decks i connect with but uh, i definitely will be using this deck maybe in the future more um that's all i have to say about this deck it is very simple there's not much to talk about now, this is all the decks I have in my collection, so thank you so much for watching. I hope it brought you some information about the decks or maybe a certain opinion. Um, now, if you have any other opinions about those decks or if you agree or disagree, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. I would love to. Um, either way, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and see you in my next video. Bye bye.